Hi everyone, this is Blake Anderson and in this video I'm going to go over uh, three lenses that I use on my Sony a7 IV. So I'm going to walk you through some you know, pragmatic uses of these three lenses and also I guess I'm just going to cover some of the features of them and some of the footage that I've shot with them to kind of give you an idea of what you can expect from these lenses. In this video, I'm going to cover the three lenses in terms of some of the footage that I've captured with it. I'm going to cover night shots, um, some of the, the budget, you know, considerations. The great thing about these three lenses, is they cover all your kind of basis, any type of shot that you would want to get, I would say very much cover, or is covered by these, these lenses. I think um, for that reason, I've come to like these three lenses. I mean, I'm sure I could probably upgrade maybe my 50. But in terms of getting a 1.8, you know, it's still a nice lens. I know that so, or I think it's, um, there's been a recently a new lens that was released just recently with a 50. Uh, I think it's uh, a Zeiss as well that you can put on a Sony. So that's a 1. I believe 2 or 1.4. So definitely that's a lens to look at. But in terms of the lenses in this video, I'm just going to cover the Tamron. Uh, 35 to 150 as well as the you know the 55 Sony the nifty 50 and then also I will cover the uh, 16 to 35 f4 which is a Sony lens hi everyone this is Blake Anderson and in this video I'm going to cover three type of lenses that I use uh, on my Sony a7 IV uh, for shooting street type photography you know headshot interviews and just you know overall cityscapes uh, so I'm going to walk you through these three lenses and why I um, you know decided to purchase them and maybe what are some of the key features of each uh, so here I have two zoom lenses and one prime and the first one I'm going to show you is the, the f4 16 by 35 and it's the G Master and this is great lens because it's very you know quite wide and it is an f4 which is still pretty good uh, aperture this lens is great for is if you want to do any type of vlogging kind of style of videos um, obviously architecture uh, landscapes can be good for it it's great I've used it for kind of a vlogging style uh, talking on camera and just uh, getting some kind of wide shots if I'm in, like, in, in interiors. Uh, let's say you're doing architecture. This is, a, this is a lens that would be great uh, for you, I think. Um, one of the features is that you can you know, zoom on the rocker itself here. And you can also on your a7 IV program the switches so that they um, can also zoom in and out. So with my Sony, I actually changed and customized uh, two buttons to do that because I find that when I do zoom on, on this here, this dial, it can be a bit quick, right? I know you can kind of slow that down in the menu, but I find that if you have, um, you know, customized manual buttons on your camera, you can, you know, very, uh, you can slow down the amount of zoom um, that you, you know, provide on your lens. So that's the first lens I wanted to show you. The second lens is the this is the Tamron 35 to 150. Uh, it's a 2.0 uh, to 2.8 aperture, and what's great about this lens is it's a zoom lens that covers you know from a 2.0 to 2.8 aperture all the way from 35 to 150 which is great amount of different primes that people might purchase. Uh, so it's not a cheap lens by any means. It's, I think, you know, I don't know, around American, I think it's close to 3000. So, or Canadian at least it's, you know, around three, three K. It's probably come down a little bit since then. The only thing about this lens is it's quite heavy. Definitely if you're doing any type of like street photography, what I like about this lens is it can zoom in and out of the, like different kind of scenes so that you're really, it's hard to mix, miss, miss a shot with um, the ability to you know, have a 35, but also have a 150. And another lens I wanted to show you guys is the Nifty 50. Uh, I've had this lens for a number of years, and this is a Zeiss uh, 1.8. And you know, 50 is great for portraits, uh, for interviews. For me, it definitely opened up my eye 
and just opened up my compassion for photography and video with this lens because when I started shooting with that lower aperture, I just, I, I really enjoyed the, the photos I was getting from it. So this lens great if you just want an overall nice uh, prime. Uh, and so those are the three lenses that I'm gonna cover in this video. Uh, kind of a feature to consider with um, both of these lenses, the, the 16 to 35 and also the Tamron, is that they do have, you know, manual buttons here. So what I've done is I've customized this button here to record. So the same thing with the Tamron is I've, there's actually three types of, you know, you can use their customized software and you can customize three customized settings. I just kept the buttons to record. That way if I'm on the fly, and I just need to shoot something, I can just click the button and know that it's going to record. If you want to get more you know, vlogging style videos, more you know, talking head maybe while you're walking, this lens is great. Uh, if you want to get you know, some really cool sharp um, images and want to you know, zoom in on your subject, uh, the Tamron 35-150 is a great lens. Um, in terms of nighttime shooting, you know, I, I often take this Prime, the 1.8, out with me because it's just low profile. Um, not a lot of people are going to be, you know, looking at me. But if I had the, you know, 35 to 150, you know, they might think I'm some professional or I might just get some more eyes on me, which at the end of the day is fine. But I kind of sometimes like to have a little lower profile just because I like to capture things more naturally, like people aren't really expecting that I'm shooting kind of thing. You know, you can still shoot with the 16 to 35 uh, f4, but obviously with, um, if it's really dark out and you don't have, you know, light in your scene, the f4, you know, you're gonna have to up the ISO quite a bit. And that's why I prefer to shoot usually with the Zeiss 1.8 at night. Uh, but I have taken the Tamron 35 to 150 out and you know you're still shooting at uh, 2.8 or 2 you know in terms of your aperture so you're definitely going to get um, still really nice uh, lit shots you know depending on what you're shooting but it's going to give you you know with a sony with a7 IV, uh, with the lens at 2.8 you're still going to get a lot of light in your scene uh, you, you're going to still probably have to up your iso a bit but with the tamron 35 to 150 I got some really nice shots with the video. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.